Welcome back, everybody, to your favorite show, A Man Drinks Cheap Shitty Beer in a Redneck Gun Range. Previously on this program, uh, we were discussing uh, various types of toenail fungus um, and also the proper way to uh, attract a mate through uh, interpretive dance. Today I'd like to talk about something a little bit more, uh, <clears throat> a little bit more important, uh, and that is objectivity. I'd like to talk about the very, very real problems with objectivity. You see, the philosophers, the philosopher, they, they they have this idea about how you can be objectively this, objectively that. Well, I have to tell you, there is essentially one big monkey wrench in the cogs of that philosophical machine, and it has to deal with neuroscience. But first, shooting break. You see, part and parcel of the actual biological human condition is that our brains are not perfect recorders of reality. Like, we experience reality in a very, very interesting way. Some people, back in the day, neuroscientists, uh, cognitive uh, researchers, would like to equate things like what we perceive of what reality is, is a snowball on top of an iceberg. That is, of all the data that comes into all of our senses, our hearing, our sense of smell, or even our vision, as poor as our vision is, we only really see or experience a tiny, tiny fraction of what is actually there. And sometimes you might think you saw something, but you didn't actually see it. But moreover, the more we understand about neuroscience and perceptual reality is we, we start to find out that in fact, it's not really a snowball on top of an iceberg. It is actually a snowflake on top of a snowball on top of an iceberg. And that is how much we actually even see or hear or smell the world. And that isn't really necessarily the limits of our biology. It's the limits that our brain imposes on us on purpose. It's the thing that basically buffers us so we only pay attention to what our brain thinks is important. So with that, even from the basic onset of, of seeing things in the world, you see something, but do you see everything about it? Do you understand everything about it? You, your brain, takes in way more than you yourself actually even know and will ever know. And that's the first problem. That's the first problem when it comes to us interpreting objective reality. But then there's the problem of memory. And memories change. In fact, in some studies, they've seen that the more you remember something, the less you remember it right. Your mental state at the time of even recalling something can completely change the dynamics of the thing that you're trying to remember. So what we have to do, and one of the most important things that ever became of, of human innovation was writing, what we have to do is we have to catalog things. We have to try and make as close to an objective report as we can. That's why we write things down in history books and textbooks. That's why we pass on our knowledge through things that are more concrete and not as malleable and, well, to be honest, um, not reliable like the human brain. Because our brains are not goddamn reliable. They're amazing, but yet they're still really fallible, squishy meat pieces. <laughs> so that's, that's problem number two. Uh, problem number three also is, of course, uh, unless it's something that's very, very concrete your perception of it is not necessarily the same as everybody else's. Take, for instance, somebody who sees uh, different types of color spectrums, things like uh, color blindness or certain types of phagia where they, they perceive things that you and I don't see or see differently. The only reason why we collectively will call a color what that color is is because we all consensually accept that it's the same thing. But that isn't to say that reality is perceived the same by everyone. In fact, we don't even know and we cannot prove that necessarily every person sees the same way. We just make our best guess. So objective reality is really not necessarily a, a very good concrete thing. And philosophers who are hardcore into it, I think, don't really appreciate how malleable and ever-changing perceptual reality actually can be. And that is because of our biology. It doesn't even matter about the philosophy. That's irrelevant. It's that that's how our brains work. Shooting break. Me 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 me
Now, does that mean you can never truly know something for certain, that there is no concrete, hard laws? There are. There absolutely are. Things like math. Math is provable because it's always provable. So, it is a law. Physics, laws of thermodynamics, anything that is basically easily provable through objective reality, the, the basis of physics, all of this are laws and they are true, objectively true, and they are always going to be the same until they're not. And then everything gets all confused again. The laws of physics break down the closer you get to a black hole. The faster things move, time starts to warp, the smaller things get, physics breaks down into the Planck length, everything gets bizarro land. And suddenly, what we thought, the most comfortable things that were supposed to be objective, are not objective anymore. Hello everybody and welcome back to your favorite mid-show show, A Man Interrupts the Program to Clarify Something While Traveling Through the Infinite Void. I figured I should probably pop in here, me, uh, Quantum Jeff, to try and explain that uh, before some super nerds get really mad at me. I'm not saying, of course, that uh, the physics itself breaks down. Of course the rules of physics are still objective, but on a macroscopic scale, the things that we assume are supposed to always be the same, are not always the same. Very often, very commonly, these things have to then be reevaluated. And that's really the point of the video. It's the things that we believe reality is shift and change depending on the circumstances. That really, objectivity is kind of conditional at times. Now, in a point in time in the future, when we possibly understand physics and quantum mechanics a little bit further, we could then have more of a concrete, objective viewpoint on how these things work? Absolutely. Absolutely. That's one thing to consider. But I figured I should probably make that mention before some super nerds in the comment section try and crucify me. Now, if you're a person who is a hippie-minded person, you might say, Well, that's just proof, man, that, like, reality is just whatever you make of it, and, like, you could just perceive things totally different. That's just like your perspective, man. You can, uh, but that, that doesn't necessarily lend to a good thing, a good experience, a good objective uh, viewpoint of the world. Yes, you can't have perfect objectivity, but that doesn't mean you can't be objective. It is still important to try and understand things in the same most broad term that everyone else can. Because if we just said, life's just whatever you make of it, well, we were, really wouldn't get that much done because we'd just be arguing over which reality is 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 real. I replace your reality and I replace it with my own. <laughs> now, I think I finally actually understand where that goddamn statement comes from. And one that I've heard on all those fucking Tumblr blogs. Wow. <sighs> you learn something new every day. You're out here in the redneck gun range. Anyway, thank you everybody for joining me uh, out here um, for your favorite show. A man drinks cheap beer out on the redneck gun range. <clears throat> uh, next episode, uh, we will uh, we'll have some tigers out here. And uh, we'll be discussing the finer aspects of their mating habits. Uh, thank you very much, and I hope you have a great day. <laughs> Hey guys, just at the very end of this video, I wanted to uh, point towards this really fascinating article that I found, and it's one of the things that I really like to think about a lot when it comes to perception, uh, memory, the actual workings of neuroscience. This is uh, from the conversation, How Do Our Brains Reconstruct the Visual World? And this is done by uh, Alex Burmester. He's a research associate in perception and memory at New York University. So if you're interested in this kind of stuff, interested in, in kind of how what we see the world as is actually what our brain has constructed and presented to us as it interprets the world. If, if that kind of thing you find really, really interesting, uh, then by all means, please check out this article because it is fascinating. It really, really honestly is fascinating. Um, if I can get just a couple of people utterly fascinated with how these amazing pieces of squishy brain meats actually work, I will feel very fulfilled as a person. So hopefully, hopefully, uh, me, me every now and then, like, just gushing like a nerd about the brain, hopefully out there it's tickling some people's pickles and, uh, and you look into it yourself. 
Have a great day, everybody. Bye-bye. Wah, 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 wah.